So, um, how about on on my on my screen? I got Ron on the left. Uh, can I start with you? Would that be okay? Sure. Well, Not exactly sure what we're how we're doing this yeah. year, but so I'll read the the words that'll be the beginning of a sentence, and then you try to carry on or whatever topic you want. Okay. Okay. So. Well, this is the questions again. Let's see. Well, like I say, I'm <laughs> I'm also colorblind. I think <laughs> that's that must have been the green ones. Yeah. Well, maybe some of them are a little different arrangement. Let's see. No, it's got to be these. Okay, I'll set across the part here. Well, that was a blank one. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, this one came out to be a question. Describe your least favorite vacation trip. <laughs> least favorite vacation trip. Describe my least favorite vacation trip. That's a hard one. I haven't had any vacation trips that I've really disliked. It's always been nice to get away and do different things with the family, whether it was before I got married and having vacation with my parents and siblings or whether it was having vacation with my family. We did go to Disney World once in Florida. That was fun, but there were a number of things that I didn't like about it. We... At the time, I was in a wheelchair because I had casts on both legs, and it amazed me how rude people could be. They'd step in front of the wheelchair where I had to stop real quick, or if we were on something and then we had to get off of it, they would cut in front of a person. And the same thing happened when we went to an island up in Michigan, and we had to take a boat to get to the island. And the people, as they were getting off the boat, it was like a mad rush. Everybody had to be the first one off the boat. And they were cutting in front of the wheelchair. And it was just, it was frustrating. Most of the vacation was fun, but that part was not so much fun. And it was hard to keep my mouth shut and not try to run into people for trying to cut me off. But those were some of the things that were, that I didn't enjoy about vacation times. Madam. Or Mr. Or Mr. Toast. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Uh, over many years, I picked up lots of, uh, during clearance sales and uh, going out of business, crutches and uh, everything, you know, extra handicap uh, devices for personal use or in the bathroom, whatever. And I've never had a chance to use any of them. I'm, <laughs> I'm disappointed. So far, I haven't been able to. Stay that way. <laughs> I do have an electric card in reserve that I had given to my sister that uh, she used until she passed. But um, anyway, um, and like most of my stuff, the battery went dead before I got around to it. Okay, this is one of the actual questions. There must have been several sections within each color category. So what it does, these are the sentences. So I'll just read, well, well, I'll just go ahead and go here on my screen with joy next. Just continue this sentence, if you wish. People disappoint me when. People disappoint me when they don't realize that my career is being the captain of a riverboat. And no one ever appreciates me as the captain of a riverboat. Now, I live right on the Ohio River, and I grew up on a river town. And we have a marina, and there is a riverboat, and I was chosen to be the captain of a riverboat. And when I explain that to people, they just don't see me as a riverboat captain. So I have captained cruises down the river like dinner cruises 
and I have captained three hour cruises down the river, but I just don't like it when people don't understand that that is my career. That is my chosen career, a riverboat captain. And it is something that is, you must be sturdy. You must really be sturdy to be a riverboat captain. And I have been sturdy and a river, a river rat all of my life. So that's a little bit about what disappoints me about other people looking down or not respecting my career as a riverboat captain. So back to you, Joe, the Table Topics Master. Thank you. Appreciate your uh, optimistic attitude toward what you do. And uh, I'd like to be your best friend sometime when you're going out and <laughs> go for some rides. Okay. Um, Janet, uh, even though you're evaluated, would you like the table topics? Sure. Okay. Let's see what this one says. Um, well, that's another question. Well, let's see. I'm getting still getting them mixed up. <laughs> let's see. They're keeping us on our toes. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, like I say, it must keep you. Okay, here's <laughs> here's a, something unexpected. Fatherhood means. What does fatherhood mean to you? Thank you for that question, Joe. What does fatherhood mean? mean to me well of course i am not a father but i i had a father and i can imagine that he was just excited and thrilled to raise three daughters and not have any sons my husband when we were married uh, my dad had him as a son-in-law, and he liked Mike because he could do woodworking. My father was also into woodworking. So my dad made a lot of furniture, especially for his wife, and he also made some games and little things like a footstool for each of his daughters. And I suppose fatherhood, you're, you might have some disappointments along the way, but overall, I'm sure you're thrilled with any child that you get. Thank you, Janet. Um, in my own, uh, like a synopsis of my life, um, 99% of my socially social experiences have all been watching movies, characters on TV and movies and whatnot. I've never experienced the, uh, uh, all the various emotional aspects of being a, a father, a mother, uh, all I've been is a son and a, and a twin brother. And I think that's what I'm going to put on my, on my grave have it that I was the twin of my sister, Joyce, so I can get her name added to my tombstone. Okay, um, David, did you want to, or would you rather pass? Yes, I can do one if you, if you need me. Okay. We have time for one more. Oh, okay. Um, uh, let's see. This one says children should be wherever you want to go with it. Okay, uh, th thank you for that, Mr. Topics Master. So our uh, children should be, it's hard to know what to, uh, what, you know, what, what, what to fill that in with. Obviously, as I think some of you know, the thing that I do most with young people these days is that I, I interview prospective um, applicants for undergrad admission at a college I attended. So that, now these are, these are high school students. So, I mean, they're high school seniors, so they're a little bit older than you would usually refer to them as, as children. You would call them adolescents. 
but I can probably draw on that experience to say, because I, obviously these are these are kids who often reflect on their their childhood experiences. So I I, I would say they they sh children should be they should be enjoying their lives. They should be having fun with their lives, but they also should have a view to the future. Uh, so they kind of should have one eye on just having fun with their lives, finding out what uh, what they're good at, what they enjoy doing, what they may want to do with their lives, what they want to do when they grow up, and and focusing a little bit on what what they are going to do in the future. So there's there's kind of that balance that that I think children need to have. That it should be a it, it should be a a fun and innocent time to to the extent that family circumstances permit, and that will be more in some families than others. So it should be fun in that way. But at some point, a child is going to grow up and they're going to be asked to make an impact on the world. And so a child should have part of their view on, on the future. And there needs to be that balance. Hmm. So I think that's what our challenge should be. Okay. Here, back to you, Mr. Master. Okay, thank you, David. Um, and as much as I've been trying to do genealogy research lately and things, I would add to things children should should talk to their their aunt their their previous their parents grandparents find out as much about their lives as you can before they're gone and learn everything to learn to, experiences to learn how to you know make more of their life going forward so take advantage of being young that you can learn a lot from the elder people and I'll return back to the Toastmaster. Thank you. Good job, Joe. Next, we have our speaker for the day, and that, that will be Dave, Dave Ash, and Janet is going to be his evaluator. So, Janet, do you have the introduction for the speaker? I do. It goes as this. All of us have no doubt heard many speeches in our lifetimes, both inside and outside of Toastmasters. Some of them are impactful and some speeches not so much. When David lived in Washington State, he had the opportunity to listen to a speech that was truly changing, life-changing. David will tell you that story now. Please welcome David Ash, the power of a four-minute speech, the power of a four-minute speech, speech, David Ash. Good evening, Madam Evaluator, Mr. Toastmaster, club members, and guests. Yes, I'm here to talk to you today about a life-changing speech that I had the opportunity to listen to at one point, as uh, Janet mentioned, when I lived in Washington State. Now, when I say that it's life-changing, what do I mean? I mean that it was life-changing for the person who gave the speech. It was not life-changing for me, and that distinction is important, and it, it is going to be something I'm going to play on as we uh, progress in talking about this speech. But it was very much a situation where I, I had a significant impact. In fact, I had a bigger impact than I was even expecting or perhaps even wanted, and the person who gave the speech had a life-changing experience. Now, I need to set the stage for this. I need to set the context in which this speech took place. And I do need to kind of beg your pardon a little bit on this, because the speech did take place in, I have to say, in a political context. I was a volunteer for a political organization in Washington State. Now, I'm aware that politics is a difficult topic, and I'm not going to get at all into the details of the politics. I'm not talking at all about political views. I'm going to be talking about the quality of a speech and how the speech impacted the person who gave the speech. But I do need to set the stage by talking about the uh, how I came to, to be listening to the speech. Uh, as you know, uh, many states in this country have uh, presidential or other uh, primaries. Washington State does things a little bit differently than maybe done in states like California or Ohio. In Washington State, at least when I lived there, we didn't have primaries, we had caucuses. And I don't know if you've lived in the state or participated in a caucus before, but it's a little bit more, a little more to it than just filling out a ballot and dropping it in a ballot box or a mailbox. Uh, when you participate in a, a caucus, you have to go to a meeting. It can be not always all that well organized. It may last for hours. There may be heated debate. 
it's just generally a bit of an ordeal of voting in a, in a caucus, more so I found than voting in a, in a primary. So the turnout for caucuses tends to be a very low. However, I was one of those hardy or foolhardy voters who actually did participate in a caucus in Washington state. And I found that the caucus was being run by someone I've referred to as a precinct committee officer. And again, not many people showed up for these and they actually needed volunteers who were going to take on the role of precinct committee officer or PCO. And again, being foolish enough to actually take on this role, I volunteered and I agreed to be a precinct committee officer, the PCO. So I have kind of a local grassroots political figure, a volunteer in my local precinct. Now, so I took on that role. I agreed to take on that role. And at a certain point, I discovered that there was an additional task involved in this role. That was part of the role of the PCOs was to fill vacancies in the state legislature when such vacancies arose. I had no idea I was going to be pressed into service to do this. But at a certain point, I got a phone call. Someone said, hey, David, there's a vacancy in the state legislature. You and a small group of PCOs need to meet and appoint who's going to sit in the state legislature. So I was called into this meeting, and there was this unexpected power to have some impact on who was going to be going into the legislature. And there were a number of candidates, and I knew nothing about these candidates at all. And so the only information that I had to, ba to base this important vote on was the speeches that the candidates gave. And it came down on the third ballot to two candidates. There was not a whole lot to distinguish between them with the game to their political views or anything else. It was really just the quality of the speech. And it was decided by one vote. And I voted for the, the winning candidate. So I had significant impact unexpectedly. And that impact was solely based on the speech because that's all I knew about the candidate who was, who was elected. So this is a great example of how a speech can change someone's life because this person is still sitting in the state legislature today, years ago, but it was a very impactful uh, speech for, for that reason. Now, how did this candidate do that? I don't remember all the details of the, of the speech. I will say there was a very high level of connection with the audience. That's what I felt made the difference. This candidate, I felt really connected with the audience, really made that effort connect with the audience. But that was what I thought was the game changer in that particular speech. So do all impactful speeches happen in these kind of uh, high level of uh, political situations? No, and that's why there's an important takeaway for all of us in this type of a situation. We all may have times when we are giving a speech to someone we don't think is going to be very impactful. I was not expecting to have any kind of impact here. In a similar situation, maybe we find ourselves uh, going to a job interview or to a sales meeting, and we're riding up in the elevator. We get a chance in riding up in the elevator to give a short elevator pitch of some kind. And we may not even be speaking to, uh, to a mover and shaker. I'm not a mover and shaker politically, but I had some impact. Similarly, in an elevator pitch, maybe you're given the chance to speak to someone who has the ear of the big decision maker. And you talk to them in the elevator, then they talk to the decision maker a day later, and they just put in a short good word for you. And that makes the difference whether you get the, uh, the job or you get the sale or whatever. So you never know when an opportunity to speak is going to have some kind of an impact. And that was really the takeaway that I took from this speech that I listened to. Now, politics, I don't really care about all that much. I don't even live in that state anymore. But it was a very strong lesson of how a speech, when people know nothing about you, a speech may be the only thing that they know about, and there it is a chance to have an impact on the people you're listening to, and those people may have the chance to make a life-changing decision that affects you. Thank you, and back to you, Madam Evaluator and Mr. Toastmaster. Okay, can we have one minute one minute of silence? Dave, if you could set that so that we can have the evaluator have time to finish her evaluation.
Okay, Janet, do you are you ready to go with evaluation? Okay, then since this is the evaluation portion of our meeting, I will turn it over to our general evaluator and we'll introduce Janet as the evaluator. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, everyone. I am pretty excited about how well tonight's meeting is going. And we have had a prepared speech. So now we can have a prepared evaluation. And Janet, would you give an evaluation of David Ash's speech about the impact that a four minute speech had on him? Thank you, Joy, and I'm general evaluator. My job is as evaluator is to do the best I can to evaluate David's speech and say how it affected me. And David spent a long time of his speech setting the stage for how someone else was impacted by him being there listening to his speech. And that was a a twist, an interesting twitch. David, you have a very good way of coming up with interesting speeches for all of us to listen to. So I appreciate that. And you're very sincere and knowledgeable. And I kind of like your style about talking, you say a sentence and then you're on to the next sentence and then you're on to the next sentence. It, I, I've kind of gotten to know you that way. But one, one thing I've noticed is um, sometimes when a speaker's mouth is extra dry, they might have some, some extra spit or saliva when they're speaking and I, Notice that you have some of this problem and a way to combat that is you know, to have your glass of water uh, to drink before you're giving your speech. And also they say deep breathing exercises probably relaxes you, makes you not so nervous. They also recommend pausing regularly when you're giving your speech. So these are just some tips I would recommend that you try. And I am very pleased that you gave a speech tonight. And I also agree that everyone can have an influence on other people, even people that are kind of high up there on the totem pole, well, we can all have influence. So thank you, Dave, for your influence on me and things I'm learning through your speeches and congratulations for giving another speech. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Janet Evaluator. Very nice. Very nice, thank you. Thank you, Janet and David. I was the word of the day and grammarian, so I'll go ahead and give that report. I didn't put the word of the day up on the screen. I just got that role a few minutes before we started. The word was impact. And the topic of the speech and the usage of it in the evaluation really led to using the word impact. 
So David used it many times and Janet used it a couple of times in her evaluation. She used the word impact and also the word influence. So that was a good use of, of the word of the day. As we are all Toastmasters and seasoned, there was not a lot of awe ah and um. There were a couple of so's and a couple of kind of. So Janet, you used kind of in your evaluation. And I really don't have any other uh, offenses on the words, but there was a lot of uh, eloquent speech in David's speech that he gave today, a lot of eloquent presentation. He came off very confident knowing what he wanted to say. And I think he got through to us very well. So that's my grammarian word of the day report. And so our next report will be from our ti timer. Dave Delahanty, you want to give us the timer report? Yeah, for table topics, Joy, one minute and uh, 25 seconds. Ron was one minute and 26 seconds. David Ash was one minute and 40 seconds. And Janet was 125. In on speech number one, David Ash was six minutes and 35 seconds. On the evaluator for Janet, two minutes and 50 seconds. So she was 20 seconds over. And back to All you, right. Toastmaster. All right, thank you. Thank you. Well, let's see. Does anyone have any announcements? I have some wrap up comments. Um, for the evaluation, but I wanted to see if there's any comments that anyone wants to make about our meeting so far. Just our... good to see everybody here. And... Yeah, I have a technology question. This thing on the C on the screen on mine, it sh you know, in a little window, it says the participant has enabled captioning. And then it says, who can see this transcript? Now, when I looked on the chat, it showed Ron saying that he saw the transcript. Now I see the messages, but I wasn't seeing a transcript like you would see on closed captioning. Does anybody know how this is working or what's it doing? I see it every time. Every meeting that I go to, I put on the transcript. If someone else hasn't already done that, but if you see the little message that says someone has put on the transcript, yes. you can just check the little box, the little X box, and it'll go away. I don't know how to help you see the transcript because mine is just automatic. I, I have it on for every meeting so that I don't miss any words. If someone, and not so much in Toastmasters, but any of my Zoom meetings, if someone doesn't oh. complete their word i can look down really quick and see it in the transcript oh the only me the other message i think i saw was when um when it, the message saying the, the recording is started and then it gives two options either okay or leave the meeting <laughs> well so apparently someone... that's a totally different message unrelated to this one right uh, it's totally unrelated and actually chat is totally unrelated to seeing a transcript of what we're saying yeah yeah. Then, well, that's where I was wondering, since Ron, since you answered it, were you just acknowledging that you saw the message about yes. a scrim, but, but you still weren't seeing the transcript itself? Correct. Okay. That's kind of what I was thinking. I might do some research on that, but uh, like I said, I see it right now. I see the little word is coming up and I always do. Maybe it's some additional feature down below. It might be that you would turn it on for yourself. It, it's oh, like here, you I know, clicked when on. someone is is making a transcript, and maybe that way you can click that on. But because Actually, we I just, record all of our meetings, in yeah. the very beginning, you're going to get the message that it is recorded. Now, we're, most of us are pretty used to that, but in a meeting that is not Toastmasters, very often, if you say, well, I really didn't come here to be recorded, and you can just leave meetings. So we hope you're always going to check. Got it. <laughs> Got it. It's being recorded. By the <laughs> way, I just found out how to activate it. On the bottom of my screen, where I had all these options of 
you know, mute video, start, stop, participants, chat, uh -huh. share, record, all that stuff. The last thing where there wasn't enough room on the screen, it said more with three three dots on the lower right. So I clicked on it and it opened up a window that that I just clicked on that says always show captions or show it with a translation or whatever, or dim screen when you share different options that I, I'd never even looked at before. So that's apparently that's know. where the transcript function is. It's, it'd be the far right. If it doesn't fit on the screen, under, it would be under the word more. I see that now too, Joe. Mine says hide captions, but I never look at it because I always have- Because you've got it on. So the only <laughs> option is turn it off. Mine was off until I clicked on it. Now it says always show. And the okay. next time I come into it- And that it, little it, box can move to the right or the left, I guess. Uh, to be out of the way, if you're watching something, oh, okay. you want to move that black box out of the way, you can use your mouse, click on it, and drag it across the screen. Mm -hmm. All right, let me make okay, a couple so other evaluator comments. So I really enjoyed that Joe gave us a little bit of history of having Toastmaster question cards that he has had from other Toastmaster meetings could be years ago. And he gave us a different spin on our table topics. And I really like that. So I wanted to, next time I do table topics, be ready for some really outlandish questions. Because when I started ta table topics, when I started Toastmasters, there were some very odd questions and they didn't, you didn't have to answer it with fact. So I've yeah. never been a riverboat captain. I've only taken, I, I did grow up on the river, <laughs> but I've only taken a couple of riverboat cruises and a lot of them when my son was young and mm. I just have taken several, but I really wanted to answer, no matter what the question was, I <laughs> wanted to use my minutes with an impact. And uh -huh. the riverboat captain just That's came great. to me. So Joe, if I ever take a riverboat cruise, I will ask you to go, but <laughs> I'm really not a riverboat captain. <laughs> okay. Uh, but you gave us a, a different spin on the questions and the, the way we can just finish a sentence. I did see that my question was about being disappointed in people, and I'm not usually disappointed in people, which is why I just quickly ran to something else. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, the evaluation, the speech, again, I said that David spoke very eloquently. I believe that he was very passionate about knowing that there was a speech in his past that had an impact on him. And Janet's evaluation was also on point. I like the fact that she thanked David. She thanked him for having a speech and for, in a way, she said she got to know him better. So it was thanking him for bringing information to us today. So I really liked that. Let's see. All right, if there are no other comments about uh, an evaluation, uh, we'll have the Toastmaster and then I'll make final comments. And if we have remaining minutes, which we should, then we can just open it up to any type of dialogue. So I'm going to say back to you, Ron, as the Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank our guests for being here. Steve, haven't seen him in quite a while since I had quit Toastmasters a while back. And I'm not sure who Paul Don Old Donald Nana is, but he's on there or she. Hi, folks. Um, apologies. I'm not able to put my camera on. I'm actually plugging in from uh, England, Manchester. I was invited by David Ash, who I oh, met okay. at one of uh, Toastmasters meetings. So he kindly invited me to one of your club's meetings. So I thought I would check it out. It's midnight over here ah. in Manchester, England. <laughs> so I'm not able to put my camera on. <laughs> Welcome. But maybe next time. Hey. <laughs> We're glad you were able to make it. Yeah, thank do, you. Do either of you, uh, Steve, or how do you say that, Paul? 
Yeah, it's Paul. Yes, Paul Donald. Okay. Okay. Do either of you have anything you'd like to say about the meeting? Unfortunately, I joined towards the end, so I missed out on most of it, really. But uh, next time, I'll try and make it earlier so I can witness all your wonderful speeches and evaluations as well. But thanks for having me. Other than that, you're welcome. It's good to have you, Steve. You have anything you want to bring up? I, I just enjoyed being here tonight. It's always good to be at a Toastmasters meeting. Enjoy and visit it. Our club, Midway Toastmasters in Kentucky on a Monday night. So extend that invitation to all of you if you are looking for another Toastmasters meeting to take a look at. Enjoyed being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed the meeting tonight. I thought everybody did well in the various roles they had. The speech that Dave Ash gave was very interesting. I've never thought about a speech affecting somebody's life, but I can see very well, especially after what Dave had to say, how a speech, whether it's four minutes or 10 minutes or whatever the case might be, can affect somebody's life, especially if it's something they start following through with because of what they heard. So thank you much for that, Dave. And I will now turn the meeting back over to our president, Joy Harris. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. I would like to repeat that our meetings are the first Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. That's where we are today, our March meeting. And they're normally the third Saturday. But because we have a conflict with a Toastmasters contest here in Ohio, we are meeting on the fourth Saturday. So please mark your calendars for the fourth Saturday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. And for the officers, we'll meet at 9.30 a.m. to have an officers meeting before the regular meeting. So please watch for us on YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel, at Cincinnati TV Toastmasters. And our club coach, Jeff Vaught, graciously does a lot of work for our club. And he has been editing our meetings and putting our contents on YouTube. And we are getting a number of views and a couple of comments. It would really be nice if you put a comment out there on our, our meeting. And even if you just said nice job or good meeting or anything, and that way, maybe we'll get picked up. Although they are already recommending, I believe I did subscribe when I went to YouTube. I saw that we have our own channel. I did subscribe, but I get a notification when there is something out there. So if I get on YouTube, I'll see a picture of a lot of things. I'm subscribed to a lot of things. And there was the whole, my whole, large screen tv screen was veronica's face and it was <laughs> one of our that was i guess the thumbnail for one of our meetings and i really enjoyed that i really like seeing that out there so i am thinking that i am ready to wrap it up and so i have had an opportunity to think about something i'm disappointed in i'm disappointed at how much concerts cost these days have you ever been to a concert? Well, I recently had an opportunity to go to a concert that was 45 cents. So the main attraction was the musical group 50 Cent, and the opening act was Nickelback. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I promised you a grin. So I am ready to wrap up the meeting. Oh, Jeff has already turned the recording off, but we do have a few minutes. Is there anything anybody else would